The first time I saw a laser show, everything changed. The physical presence of the light, the intensity, the purity of color. It was science fiction made real. In the beginning, laser shows were controlled by expensive and complex consoles. Each live performance was unique, and a new art form was invented. As technology developed, laser shows were sequenced to timelines. Laser shows became automated, repetitive. They lost their audience. What if we could fix that? What if you could control a live laser show in your living room, or in your club, or for your band? And what if it was inexpensive and could fit in your backpack? What if we could start over? What if we could run the revolution again? Only this time, make it for everyone. My name is Andrew Kilpatrick and I've been designing synthesizers and electronic music products for musicians all around the world. I've been working in electronics and embedded software development for over 15 years. I'm trained in electronics design, programming, and music. I've previously worked on three crowdfunding projects that were all designed, built, and delivered on time. My latest project is called Radiator and it takes a lot of the concepts from music synthesizers and applies them to visual arts using laser projectors. Radiator has a number of challenges because we're taking a complete laser synthesizer system and putting it in a standalone device. It doesn't rely on any other hardware or computers. Just plug in a laser projector and you're all set to go. Radiator is a small, compact and portable unit that you can put in your backpack, plug in and get up and running within one minute. If you're a musician or a producer and you want to add lasers to your performance, you can add Radiator to your existing system and control it from MIDI or voltage control. Most existing laser systems require a powerful computer and other external expensive hardware. Radiator is a complete system which means you provide power to it and you plug your laser projector in and that's it. Technology has come a long way in the laser world in the last few years and now laser projectors that can create high quality really bright images are available for a reasonable price. This is an art form that anyone can get involved in. I'm Christopher. I'm part of Team Radiator, and I'm really excited to share with you what we've been working on. I'm a laser artist. I've exhibited across the United States, up into Canada, and as far away as Dubai. I've received 15 international awards for my laser artwork, and I've been featured on the BBC. The Radiator is a laser synthesizer. It makes music, but not for your ears. The Radiator is a dedicated controller for creating live laser shows with abstracts and beams. We debuted our first prototype at the International Laser Display Association Conference in Montreal, and the second prototype at NASA's Kennedy Space Center for the Yuri's Night Celebration. Recently, I performed with it at the Currents New Media Festival in Santa Fe, New Mexico. If you're a DJ, or working with visual synthesizers, or lasers doing live shows, the radiator's for you. The radiator will work with any laser projector that has a standard ILDA connector. And I'm really pleased to announce that we've partnered with X-Laser in the United States so we can provide package deals with safe and high quality laser projectors along with the necessary paperwork to ensure they're legal to operate. All we need is your help. We built the first two prototype models using our own money and resources. We did all the manufacturing and software development in-house. Now we need to refine the hardware and finalize the software. We have parts sourced and dealers standing by. We're finalizing deals with laser companies with a whole slew of really amazing features that we're implementing. As with all manufacturing, the more you make, the lower the price and the higher the quality. We want you to be able to get the radiator for a great price. This means we have to build enough to make them affordable for everyone. With your help, we can make this possible. Thank you so much for your support.
large gathering of Lazarus that happens uh, once a year in the United States called Selene. And over the last couple of years, there has been an emergence of live abstract shows and, and people working together to play lasers to music, um, avoiding all timelines and just sort of using lasers as a form of expression and performance instead of pre-programming things. And the radiator kind of spun out of that and, and our desire to open up laser shows in, in a way that, that are fun and in a way that's, that's immediate and really gratifying. So we've spent a lot of time working on uh, how to optimize things, how to, how to build a device that is extremely powerful yet uh, pretty inexpensive and really, really portable. And the radiator is what we've come up with. And uh, the, the device that I use to make the, the videos and the Kickstarter and the stuff that I've been posting on Facebook and on YouTube, that's our second version prototype. You know, we've learned a, a great deal from uh, prototype number one to prototype number two. Uh, we've managed to get the size down to about half the size of the original prototype um, and add a huge number of new features, including some things that you absolutely couldn't do back in the early days. Things like uh, having user addressable presets that uh, you can dynamically set and edit and resave and call up during a live performance and in a very, very intuitive manner. Uh, we've solved some problems around uh, routing signals across a bus and now you can take data from our low frequency oscillators and stack them on top of each other, assign them dynamically to any control that you want to, or even have one oscillator influencing other oscillators for some really complex and intriguing effects. So you actually sent us um, a short video that shows the presets in use. You mind if I roll that real quick? Absolutely. So, so let's talk about presets a little bit. I've got a radiator here, and uh, I've got it configured just to draw a single uh, red circle. And... Uh, I'm using uh, shape A to generate that circle and everything else is set to zero. So shape A is just a, a standard shape generator. Uh, it started life as a VCQO, but then it became so much more. Uh, for instance, uh, we've got a shape control that uh, gives us quite a variety of different shapes to work with. Um, We've got a warp control, which rotates the shape on one axis. We've got a manual rotation control, uh, which also has an oscillator built in. So we can add velocity in one direction or velocity in a different direction, which is super handy. Uh, we have a size control and we have a draw speed control. Okay. So, uh, let's build an abstract. So I'm gonna turn on shape generator two, and then I'm gonna turn the size up on shape generator two. And uh, we've got a nice pattern here. So uh, what we have is a harmonic between the speed of shape A and shape B. And by changing those speed ratios, we can get different patterns. Uh, we also have a sync function that uh, attempts to find uh, harmonic relationships automatically which is really nice for doing live play because there's not so much seeking and not so much hash as you're looking for a harmonic. Um, so I'm gonna take some uh, influence from modulator A, uh, which is basically an LFO. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, select, which tells the, the modulator that we're going to be routing a signal out of it to another control. And in this case, I'm going to use it to drive 
the size of shape A. In fact, I'm going to turn off shape B so it's easier to see. Okay, now I'm going to turn the speed up and the level up. And level is the uh, modulation amplitude coming out of the LFO. And then I'm um, also changing the amount of influence that the LFO has on the shape. And now I'm going to take the speed of the modulation down a little bit. Um, we have a, a shift button here, which uh, in this mode selects between coarse and fine uh, for the controls. So we have uh, quite a lot of granularity. That seems pretty reasonable. And the nice thing is the output of these LFOs can be routed to multiple things. So we can say, uh, while we're controlling the size of shape A, uh, I also want to use it to control the blue channel from the color modulation controls. Okay, so we've got that going. Let's turn uh, shape B back on. And we've got a, a nice little abstract. And you know, we can do things like, um, output a square from shape B and a circle from shape A or you know vice versa and some other nice things but let's use this as our basic abstract example and let's now make a preset so we've got an abstract we like all we have to do is hit the store button and then hit the uh, the bank number and that abstract is now saved so we can go back to our system default of this red circle and then we can hit, you can see there's a light blinking here showing you that we're running this preset. And then we can bop over to the preset that we just saved. And we're back to exactly where we were. And again, our light's blinking to show you that this is the preset that's playing. So uh, presets are just digital patches that uh, encompass every control on the board. So for live play, you know, it's really easy to start hitting a bunch of presets and then uh, modulating things to the music based on the speed controls here and the speed controls here. Uh, really awesome video. I really appreciate you showing us the actual live console use with the video feed from that. The whole thing really feels like a finished product. And that's one of the things I've been telling people about why the Kickstarter is something that I personally believe in and why I'm really glad that we partnered on this is that I've supported a number of Kickstarters in the past where you weren't really sure whether it was real, whether it was vaporware, whether it was ever going to happen. But when I had the chance to handle this at Kennedy Space Center for Yuri's Night, I was really impressed by the fact that your prototype feels like a finished product. Do you want to talk a little bit about the hardware development team and, and your partners there and how you guys have gone into that process? Sure, absolutely. So. My, my partner, there's two partners on this project other than me. There, there's QP who's doing all the design work and the graphic layout. Uh, there's Andrew Kilpatrick from Kilpatrick Audio. Andrew's a modular to have him on the project because at the end of the day, this really is just a synthesizer, even though it's optimized for laser output. Um, we started with me sitting down and making reams and reams of block diagrams on paper and then feeding them to Andrew and, and talking to him about signal flow and path and order of execution for events. Um, and then Andrew sat down and started doing a lot of programming. Uh, we, we started with software prototypes. Uh, we went to hardware. Version one was, I'm, I'm not sure you've seen it, but version one was a large wooden box full of, of discrete oscillators and some, some oscillating behind them. Um, that's what version two, we, Montreal, we've really right? optimized that. We've yes, yes, we debuted that at ILTA in Montreal. And it was really fun to present that because uh, at ILTA, which is the International Laser Display Association, there are a lot of professional lasers who have been in the business for 30 or 40 years. And the prototype that we brought to that was very reminiscent of 
the hardware that they used to use during the infancy of laser shows. So it was really enjoyable to bring uh, a little bit of that back to them. And uh, one of the people that was very touching to show and, and present this to was Glenn Thomas, who was one of the premier laserists for Laserium. He's performed on the order of 10,000 shows uh, for Laserium over the decades and recently won a, a Lifetime Career Achievement Award for his laser work. So it was just really, really fun to say, hey, Glenn, look what we've done. What do you think about this? And, and to see his reaction. Um, and we took lessons learned from, from uh, version one and from that experience, and we turned them into version two. Um, Andrew has a ton of experience doing hardware and software. Um, he's got a, a really great supply chain for components and just you know really spot on methodology for saying, okay, we need an enclosure like this. We need controls like this. We need knobs. We need encoders. Um, here, I'll cat out the circuit board. I'll run this through the pick and place, and we can build a thing. And it's just been kind of astonishing to me how quickly uh, we got to the point of having version two after we've made version one. And like you say, it's it's a beautiful powder-coated metal enclosure. The knobs are no aluminum. It it feels like something that you would just grab off the shelf and go with, uh, and it's just a prototype. And, and what we have slated for the production model is as big an, of an improvement over version two as version two was over version one. It's really, really exciting what's happening behind the scenes here. Yeah, and you've been doing a lot of amazing stuff with uh, with software, timeline-based controls and so forth. Um, you know, as you saw in your pre-roll, the pre-roll here, that you've won multiple ILDO awards for your, your software-based shows. What was it that brought you back to winning something that was physical and hardware-based and more, um, I guess, older school? What, did you, what, what led you to, to kind of make that jump? Well, it's really the freedom of expression. Uh, timeline shows are really fun, but... They're so finicky to do because they're so tightly coupled to music. And you're you're thinking about timing on the order of milliseconds to hit a beat or hit a music cue or an event or something. And it just turns out that if you can use lasers and laser art as a form of expression, as a as a performance, instead of something that's programmed on the timeline and it's the same time after time again, mm -hmm. it just brings. I think the joy back into to using lasers instead of the stress of making sure that you hit something. It's just, it becomes really organic. It becomes performance based, and it just really becomes fun. And and you know you'll get a chance to experience that. But it's just it's a whole nother world, and it, it's something that I'm really really loving. Yeah, I can't wait to actually play with it. I'm really looking forward to actually being able to turn some knobs and and you know. If someone like you thinks that someone like me can create something cool with it, then I'm super excited about it. Uh, and there's been a lot of a, a kind of a resurgence, I think, in kind of making a physical thing that makes light. We've seen a number of projects at Salim. There's there's other software solutions that are more about the abstracts now, right? So uh, what kind of led you to kind of, how did you figure out what to put into your solution out of, you know, the vast array of possibilities? How did you figure out a feature set? Uh, that's a that's a really difficult question to answer because some of it grew really organically. Mm -hmm. uh, abstract consoles have, you know, some some basic universal components. They have uh, voltage control quadrature oscillators, VCQOs to generate the shapes. They have LFOs to modulate those shapes. Uh, they have controls for color cycle and color op operations. And so we started with with the idea of taking some VCQOs and stringing them together and you know, making, summing them and making pretty light out of them. But then we got to thinking, well, we could make a VCQO or we could make something that, that functions as one but uh, can create arbitrary shapes, anything that we program into it. So we're not, we're not constricted to just squares and circles and sine waves. Uh, we can program any arbitrary shapes into them. Uh, and then we discovered, you know, we can do the same with the LFOs. They don't have to be RAM, they have to be signs, they don't have to be triangles. They can do whatever waveforms we can come up with. And then working out a, a way to route that data around uh, just, just opened us up to some really unique uh, effects that I think people are going to love. But uh, in, in creating version 2, 
one of the uh, one of the the key philosophies that we wanted to have is we wanted to be able to optimize this, so anybody can grab a console and start making really pretty light without what we call hash, which is just you know not finding an interesting harmonic between shapes. And to do that, uh, we added presets, which I think is something that no other abstract console has. Uh, we've I've currently programmed in a hundred presets, but there's there's basically no limit to the number that you can have, and so um, it's it's really nice. You can hit a preset and change a mood on a beat, and then you can modulate that preset with the LFOs or the speed from the shape generators, and it just becomes something that's really dynamic and something that that is heavily optimized for getting coherent and interesting patterns out with the minimal of effort. So one question that we're getting, Chris, is, uh, and this is from YouTube, uh, Zinodilidon, I apologize for not knowing the name, you're, you dinosaur, is asking, is there a master cap on this so that they don't blow their galvos? One of the comments that we get from people sometimes who are using analog synths with laser projectors is that it can be, if you're pushing the limits, pretty hard to blow out your galvos. Um, what all have you guys done in order to prevent that with your system? Okay, so that's a really good question. And we've got a couple of things in place already. My frequency ranges for every single control. So we can make sure that you're not overdriving the frequency of the galvos. Uh, we have master size controls. So if the galvos get really unhappy, you can start cranking the size down so they'll be okay. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really up to the user and I, and I think it's, it's even true with timeline shows. Uh, you know, as, as you program things on a timeline, you can tell if the galvos are getting stressed and so you can back off. Uh, and the same here, if you hear the galvos whining, you can turn the speed down on one of the oscillators. Uh, usually it's a shape generator that, that saves you. Um, but we can also control the number of points per second that are coming out of the system as a way to, to optimize both the image uh, and to protect the galvos. So, so we'll get back to uh, Andrew's questions here in a minute, but I got one more question from uh, one of our users, Dustin Derry, awesome guy. You'll see him at Salim, you know him well. Um, he's asking, is there companion software to help create those shapes and waves? Uh, not really. Uh, all the processing, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Turn the knobs, right? That's how you so, all the processing is being done inside the console. Uh, we are we are working on a, a display system that's external to the console, so you can get sort of a big picture of what's going on. Uh, and also, the production version will have an embedded LCD display on the console itself, so you can kind of quickly create and preview abstracts before sending them out. Uh, but as, as you work with the system and kind of understand our philosophy in trading and manipulating abstracts, I think very, very quickly it will become second nature to you. And uh, you won't think about the requirement of needing some external software or external builders. Yeah, that seems to be the way that everything's moving these days is having it all integral to the system. I know that's one of the things that Dustin in particular really likes about our Mercury control system. Well, that's thing to be optimized for ease of use and for fun. And, and our philosophy is, you know, you want to be able to show up and have beautiful stuff coming out of your laser projector in less than a minute. So it's hook the laser projector up to the radiator, turn the radiator on, and uh, set a zone and go. Uh, there's no, no worrying about network protocols, no worrying about you know, booting up your laptop or, Windows you know, updates. do you need to do a window? You're, you're right, exactly. We just, we, we don't want to have to deal with any of that stuff. You know, that, that takes away from the fun. So, uh, we just want it to work. I heard it's easier to set up than a live stream. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to have to agree with you on that. Yeah, so uh, this has a clear kind of heritage from a lot of the planetarium shows. As you mentioned, that was one of your inspirations. So given that you've taken what used to be a giant console and you know racks of equipment, 
you've put this into a kind of a very backpackable form factor. So where do you see this going? Uh, well, I hope to see it going everywhere. You know, um, it's really designed, you know, you can use this in clubs, uh, DJs can use it, uh, big raves and big shows can use it. Uh, I'd love to get this back into planetariums and sort of, you know, bring that circle all around to the beginning again. Um, it, it'd feel really, really good to, to see that happen and kind of give that back. Um, and the other thing is, we're almost to our stretch goal, which will allow you to save Ilda streams out of this, which seems a, a little counter to the idea of a live console, but you can then use this as a content generator and take that Ilda stream and then put it back into timeline software, uh, Exhilarate, LSX, uh, Beyond, Quickshow, any of those things. So uh, even though you're making the timeline laser show, it'll still have that that really organic feel to it that can only come from using the live console. That's really exciting. And one of the things that I want to make sure that people understand on the DJ side is that, yeah, it's, it's about making great art. But one of the really nice things about abstracts in particular, and Chris, if you don't mind just sort of showing us some abstracts on your end, um, put you on the spot here with that. One of the great things about abstracts in particular is that you don't need fog or haze. One of the comments that we get on a pretty regular basis is, hey, I, I live in X major metropolitan city and the fire marshal's always on our ass about using fog and haze and all that. And that's sort of problematic if you're trying to do a laser show with traditional beams. But with something like what you're seeing on the screen right now, which is live output from the radiator that Chris is doing right now, um, you don't need fog or haze to make that beautiful. It can be beautiful with fog or haze. I've got a short clip here that we can cut to if people want of showing the radiator beams through the air. But to be able to do this live control and play the light like an instrument, but not need haze for it, makes this a really nice portable setup. Because the system doesn't require a PC, because the system is so compact, fits in your backpack with the laser, it's super compact and very straightforward, and you're not carrying a hazer around. You don't have that fluid to worry about, all that. So that's a huge benefit for anyone in the DJ crowd. All the synth guys are going to love this because it's functionally a synth. Like, it's it's got the modern conveniences of the presets and things like that, but it's got the feel of a laser synth. Um, but the DJs should absolutely check this out if they're having issues with fog or haze, or they just want to add another layer to the show. The key thing that lasers get you in general is that high contrast, high saturation, and that's something that you can't replicate with video. It's something you can't replicate with a mover. It's very, very distinctive and unique. And that's one of the things I love about laser light. I know it's one of the things Andrew loves about laser light. And Chris, how about you tell us a little bit about how you feel about that in general? Uh, I absolutely agree. I, I find that the laser light itself is so captivating. Sort of universal reaction when you fire up a laser in a room full of people who have never experienced the light, and the light becomes another entity in the space, and you get this sort of collective gasp and people's jaws drop and, and everybody pulls out their phone because they've just experienced something that, you know, they've seen on TV, they've seen on YouTube, but it just absolutely can never compare. And um, to me, this this sort of becomes the best video game ever because you get to create, <laughs> but there's no rules about what you're creating and what you're doing. So you can just sort of drive it um, in any way that pleases you. And it just, it's so much fun. And, and I've, you know, I've, I've performed live with the radiator uh, in multiple locations and it's, it's just, an incredibly good time and you get to make you get to participate in the event that's happening around you and you get to make some really beautiful light and some really beautiful expression in the process so one one thing that's come up on the uh, YouTube chat from Derek is he's saying he'd be willing to contribute presets and shows if there's an easy way to trade is there a way to transfer and if the answer is hey we haven't gotten that far it's still very prototype we're working on it 
But is there a way to basically like say, okay, well, this is my preset file. I want to share it with the community and, and in, in such further the art. Okay, so that's a really, really good question. And the answer to your question is yes, absolutely. Uh, we will have a, a USB port on the radiator so you can save files off and uh, you can share presets. Presets are just text files. So you can hand edit them, you can copy them, you can distribute them. Uh, and we're even talking about having a repository where people can upload and share presets and people can download presets. Because, you know, I've, I've made about 100 presets for this so far. And I have absolute confidence that people are going to be making things that I've never even dreamed are possible. And I can't wait to see what those are. And I can't wait to work with those in my own shows and my own productions. And uh, so we've talked a little bit about audio synth as well and kind of the parallels here, uh, but you actually have sort of designed this to work alongside audio synth as well, right? Yes, absolutely. The radiator has uh, audio in and out, so you can modulate uh, what's happening in the radiator from external audio signals. And you can also take the output of the data that would go to the Galvos and use that to drive an amplifier and speakers and get some great sound out of it. Uh, we also have MIDI in and out, so you can control the radiator from an external sequencer, or you can send output from the radiator uh, to other laser control software. So you could drive, you could use the radiator to abs uh, output abstracts while you're also using the radiator to drive effects in other laser show software like Beyond or LSX or whatever. Uh, we also have control voltage in and out. Uh, so if you're a mod synth person, uh, you can use your, your modular to drive effects on the radiator, or you could use output from the radiator LFOs to drive your modulars. And uh, speaking of audio, just uh, again, again going back to the planetarium days, someone mentions that you could actually record the output to an audio, the five channel audio track to share, which actually uh, used to be the way that laser shows were kind of recorded and played back and spliced. So it's uh, kind of an interesting thing to see people, people making that connection back now that um, you have something that's that's very reminiscent of a synthesizer in the in the audio world, but for light. Uh, yeah, we've kind of we've kind of closed the circle and gone back to the old ways of you know, kind of getting your hands in the metal and, and getting the immediate feedback of using a, a hardware console instead of using a mouse and, and clicking virtual interfaces on the computer, which is so unsatisfying and just so frustrating to use. So this is, this is a really disruptive thing. And that's one of the things that you and I get awfully proud about. I know Andrew just gets fired up on it. He spent the last couple of days on a secret project. It's absolutely going to disrupt things. The, the whole disruptive aspect of it is really enticing because you're, you're doing a lot to sort of democratize what had traditionally been really hard. <laughs> I mean, abstracts for me have been incredibly difficult to create. Um, even with systems like LSX, like Beyond, like our Mercury control system, for me, it's been really hard to find those harmonics and make something that's, you know, really beautiful. Tell us a little bit more about what your goal with disruption is here. And if there are any other like disruptive technologies out there that you see in the world of laser and laser light that are coming up on the forefront or, or really interesting to you. Wow, that's a loaded question. Um, don't worry, it's only live. <laughs> no pressure. What we want to do with the radiator is give anybody the ability to make beautiful laser light, regardless of software competent, competency, regardless of you know the cost of barrier to entry, because these these consoles that we're making are not very expensive, and the uh, the laser bundles that we have with the console are an incredible deal for, for quite good quality projectors. And, and that's really thanks to, to you and Andrew for making that possible. So we're, we're lowering the barrier to, to, of entry for, for somebody to do what would cost hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to do in the past. Now you can do it for a few thousand dollars and you can do this you're living this in your, your rave, 
or, or really anywhere that it's it's safe to operate lasers in. And uh, to me, that's a really powerful thing to make to make this kind of esoteric and formally really difficult artwork accessible to everybody. And and I really think that by putting this in the hands of people who maybe aren't traditional laserists, uh, what we're going to see is some amazing things come out of it that we've never really thought about. And because the radiator is such an open system, uh, I think that people are going to be creating their own uh, interactive and interesting control surfaces or driving this through uh, some software that they wrote themselves. And, and it's just going to, I hope, really open up this field for exploration uh, and for fun. And, you know, there's there are people writing really good laser software packages that are really quite inexpensive. And, and again, you know, like I'm really excited to see where all of that goes. And I think, you know, taking this thing that, that in, in the past could really be owned by a very select few and just kind of letting that technology loose around the world and to anybody who's interested, I think will just only result in, in really amazing and, and unexpected things. And, and that's one of the things that really excites me about what we're doing here. That's awesome, man. So we got a question from Hank asking, hey, using the audio input, is there a way to set it on random so you can just sort of set it and forget it and have an evening of synchronized to audio abstracts without interacting with it directly? And I don't know if that's really what the intent of this tool is, uh, but could you speak a little bit as to what that, what, what the, your reaction to that is? Sure. So that's a that's a really good question, and you're right. It's it's absolutely not the direction that we want to go with this. You know, there's there's great software and hardware packages that you can buy off the shelf to do that sort of thing. Uh, if if you just want something that's audio reactive, uh, this is more. A tool for live performance and not a tool to uh, have running in the background at a party yeah that makes all the sense in the world and there, there are a couple other things like i know the laser dock actually does a really good job on the sound active side of things if that's what you're looking for um it does a it does a surprisingly good job there we've also and this might warm your heart a little bit uh we've got some some comments in here there are several people that seem to think that they're going to be uh ditching their APC 40s once this is out because they'll be able to use this as the APC 40 for their MIDI control but also have a great analog console. Right, and, and not just also but at the same time. Uh, and I can, I can guarantee you that I, I have an APC 40 and I can guarantee you that the radiator feels much, much better than turning plastic knobs on a plastic console. Uh, we're using... Uh, nice gnarled aluminum knobs uh, and rotary encoders, uh, and we have controls for, for fine and coarse adjust. Uh, and one of the things that that provides us by using encoders is everything becomes stateless. So if you drive this radiator uh, with an external console, you don't care about knob positions. Uh, it just doesn't matter. And, and that's what allows us to do presets because knob positions just aren't important anymore. Yeah, this is really exciting. I, like I said, I can't wait to play play with it in person. Um, it's a, it's an interesting time to be in the laser business because, as you alluded to before, we you know the the cost of the equipment has come down so far. Uh, it's really kind of, uh, as Adam said, kind of democratized it. Now to put something that is really kind of focused on ease of use and ease of creating really amazing organic shapes, um, it's really exciting. I know some people uh, who have been in the laser industry for a while may have a different perspective on that, but um, I think it's an exciting and uh, great time to be in the laser business. Even if you're just you know looking to get a radiator as someone to kind of just get your feet wet with lasers. It, it's a really good way to get started. Like I said, the, the, the bar of entry is really, really low and the learning curve is, is extremely low on um, getting a radiator uh, running and getting beautiful light. Uh, all the presets that I've made are, are absolutely included, and by the by the time we're shipping these, uh, I'll have hundreds more standing by and ready for people to use. Uh, the thing is, nobody controls the laser industry. Nobody can say this is wrong or this is right or you're making light in the correct way. 
Oh, would you mind uh, would you mind repeating that, Chris? We we lost you after uh, no one can say this is wrong. Right. So so nobody owns the laser show industry, uh, and and nobody can say you're using light the right way or you're using light the wrong way. The only thing that you have to worry about is are you being safe, and that's extremely important. But uh, we want to provide a new way for people to make light. We want to provide a way for people to have fun and bring lasers back for performance. And, and even if that's their living room or if that's a, a huge show or a rave or if they're just a DJ, uh, and I don't mean that derogatory, but if they're a small DJ and they want to add lasers to their show, uh, you know, this is a really fantastic tool for them to do. Um, it's super responsive and it's just fun and, and it, it just it adds a lot to any performance. So now the Kickstarter is completed, you're funded. I know you have you started to look into into more stretch goals. Do you have plans for what happens next with the uh, as a Kickstarter? I guess um, how long, how much longer do you have on the Kickstarter? By the way, uh, I think we have 16 days left, which is really fantastic. I mean, we were we were 40 percent funded in the first weekend, which is just it, it's so gratifying to me to see other people uh, trust us and be interested in what we're doing. Uh, the, the ILDA output, or the ILDA save, is our first stretch goal. Uh, I can't really talk about our next stretch goals until this one's met, but we've got some really good stuff standing by, and you know, just like, I hope we get a chance to implement them, because everything that we do will make this better and more fun and more gratifying for people to use. So one of the questions that we're getting in the chat is and and if you don't know the answer to this yet that's fine um but there are people asking so what's the retail cost they don't have the the loose cash to get into the kickstarter right now but they definitely want one at some point what do you expect the retail cost after the kickstarter ships to be obviously it's best for people to get in on the kickstarter because they're going to get the best price there that's you know what you get for helping to fund the development of this thing but what are people expecting when it is in stock at a distributor like, say, X Laser? Boy, that's a that's a really difficult question for me to answer, uh, and I'm really I'm I'm not comfortable answering that yet. That's fine. See, this is why we trust you, is because if you don't have the answer, you're not going to bullshit us. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, while you were saying that, Kristoff in here just flat out said in the chat, "In Swami Dog, we trust." <laughs> well, the, the thing to think about it, if you're on the edge about trusting this Kickstarter is I'm, I'm putting my reputation in the laser industry on the line to make these things. So I have absolutely a huge amount of everything to lose if this doesn't work out. And I wouldn't do it if I wasn't absolutely confident uh, in our capabilities and in the radiator itself. That's uh, and for anyone who doesn't know that uh, that is a heavy statement because uh, if you're not familiar with Chris's work, it's uh, incredible and uh, for him to put that level of reputation on the line of this product says a lot. So um, if you're not familiar with Chris's work, just by the way, you should absolutely check out um, all the other shows that he's done. And uh, actually, if you wouldn't mind uh, letting people know where they can see your other work, because as as I, personally, I think it's amazing as well and uh, is multiple award winning. So what's the best place for people to? see just uh, how significant your reputation is? Well, the best place for people to see it would be Celine. But the second best place would be uh, YouTube. And uh, my, my personal YouTube handle is SwamiDog. So if you go to youtube.com slash SwamiDog, uh, you'll find video of my laser shows and some of my other uh, laser and lighting related artwork. Yeah, so and then, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, absolutely check that out if you haven't seen Chris's work because, um, yeah, he's won. Uh, how many how many older awards are you up to at this point? 19, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so absolutely incredible and well-deserved. So um, definitely go and check out to see uh, what he's done, and you'll then understand the gravity of him saying that he's taking his reputation on this project because that's a, that's a serious statement. So are you concerned about people, you know, winning a bunch of Ildo Awards with the Radiator now? Do you get to claim, like, 5% credit for that? <laughs> well, as long as I'm winning, I don't really... 
Oh, we lost you again. We lost you again. Would you mind coming on back with that, Chris? Uh, as long as? as I would be incredibly flattered if people bought a radiator and were using the radiator to make award-winning content. I mean, regardless of them, them beating me in competition, that would just feel so incredibly good, and I would just be honored that that happened. I mean, that's what every parent wants, right? To see their kids grow up to be a little bit better than them? Yeah, well, not too much better. <laughs> but, but, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it would be, it would just, it'd be really, really fun. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to presenting the Radiator at the next ILDA conference. Uh, and that's coming up in uh, November in uh, Orlando. So it would be really nice to take it there and, and let people see how the Radiator is growing since they saw it a year ago. One of the things I really love is that in the comments, we've got a bunch of people taking credit as claiming the laser industry. And I believe every single one of them. What are they saying? They're just saying that they own the laser industry. Oh. <laughs> I think you, uh, you touched a couple buttons with that one. I like it. Yeah, you know no, that's, that's right. great. Yeah, I mean, what, what I love is, is we have the honor to be able to invent the technology that we use for our art. And that's a pretty amazing gift. And it, it's something that, that we really want to uh, cherish the philosophy of and, and take with us as we're designing this and, and as we're thinking about uh, how to make this easier and how to make this more fun and how to make this more amazing. You know, we, we have to honor that gift. We have, to, we have to respect the fact that this is something that very, very few industries and very, very few art forms uh, have the capacity or, or have the, the, the honor to do, the obligation to do, is to, to invent amazing technology to make everything better. Yeah, that's really one of the amazing things about the industry. I agree with you completely about that, is that it's, it's still treading new ground. Part of that treading new ground is the fact that the industry has been stuck in the 80s for a really long time and we're just now breezing through the 2000s. Um, and that's really fun. But I mean, it's, it's been this, this fantastic journey of exploration and, and breaking new ground. And people are really open-minded when it comes to the laser stuff. It's really great. Well, I think we're, we're seeing a, a really uh, big uh, boost in innovation and experimentation. And for a while, you know, technology was really stagnant and people would say, oh, I need a laser projector. Okay, I'm just going to order a module, and now I have a laser projector, and I'm going to plug it into my software and go. And they just become tools, and they don't become uh, artifacts of making art. And uh, we're, we're seeing that turn around, and people are building things, and people are programming things, and people are just beginning to make stuff that's going to take the industry so much farther than it is right now. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting stuff. Um, I guess, is there anything else you'd like to say in closing about the Radiator, about the Kickstarter, anything like that? For anyone who hasn't checked out the Kickstarter, uh, please do. A uh, quick and easy way to get to it is just go to radiator.x-laser.com, and that'll take you automatically to the Kickstarter page. And then once the Kickstarter is over, that'll take you directly to the Neon Captain page. Uh, where you can see more about the radiator and the other cool stuff that I'm sure they have coming in the future. I just want to say thank you. You know, it's been it's been really really gratifying uh, how people have reacted to this, and I think there's always some hesitation when you bring a, a new product out or a new bit of innovation out, and no matter how proud you are of it, and no matter how hard you've worked on a thing, there's always that little bit of saying. Should I let it go now? Should I let it out now? Is it okay? Is it ready? Yeah. And the response to the radiator has been really, really overwhelming. And uh, I'm, I'm so grateful to see how people have reacted to it. I'm so grateful that people are, are putting their trust in us and, and funding this as a Kickstarter. And I'm just, I get badgered every day saying, have you shipped me my radiator yet? Is it ready yet? Can I have it? <laughs> it's always <laughs> nice when people get super, super excited about the product and say, hang on, hang on. We still have to build the right. thing. I appreciate your excitement, but calm down just a tiniest bit. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's I'm super 
Sorry about that. You were breaking up on us there, Chris. Go ahead. Uh, I, I, uh, so I'm Captain Impatient, and and I totally get it. But man, it just it just feels so good. And and internet, that's not an invitation to harass me about that all the time. <laughs> but it does feel really good when when people are excited about this because that that gives us the energy to make it hopefully even more amazing and to get it out the door sooner and better uh, than we've promised. Well, man, we're, we're super excited. We couldn't think of anyone better to partner with than yourself and uh, the, the rest of the team at Neon Captain. You guys are doing amazing work out there. I really look forward to getting in more hands-on time with this at Salim in two weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is going to be really great. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. This has been a blast. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll some additional video after this, showing a little bit more of the awesome split-screen video that Chris did. Uh, and Chris, I'll go ahead and let you close it out before I move on to that video. All right. I, so thank you to everybody who supports this. Uh, if you're back or, or not, I just really appreciate getting comments about uh, what you like about it and what you would like it to be. And a huge shout out to X Laser. You guys have been fantastic. Uh, the projectors that you guys are providing for the bundles are really high quality, surprisingly high quality. Uh, and we've done uh, the majority of our programming and development on those lasers, and they've just been a joy and a surprise to use. So thank you, and I'm, you know, I'm really looking forward to this being the first of many projects that we collaborate on. And so here's to disrupting the industry, and here's to making some beautiful things, uh, hopefully for a really long time. Excellent. Right. Looking forward to it. All right. Thanks, everybody.